brothers and sisters in Christ, kind Christian greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. Today's video is based on the topic, the feast to the Lord. We see it mentioned in Exodus 32nd chapter, 5th verse. Let's read it. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Let's understand the background. Israelites were slaves in Egypt. Using Moses, our Lord brought them majestically from the bondage of slavery. Let's read Exodus 15, chapter 13th verse. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed, thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. So Lord had guided them in his strength. And if we read Exodus 13, chapter 14 verse, we understand that Egypt was the house of bondage. What majesty did people witness? When the Israelites were about to cross the Red Sea, they eyewitnessed the sea being set apart. After a while, God calls Moses so that he may give some commandments, that he may establish some principles among the people. The Israelites, being impatient, they appointed some things according to their minds, as we read in Exodus 32nd chapter, first verse. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. So they are pressing Aaron to make them a god. And Aaron is replying to them in second verse, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. So they are bringing all of them to Aaron. In fourth verse, we understand that Aaron fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And this said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. It's necessary for us to understand what was behind their mind. After doing this, Aaron says in fifth verse, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. We who are considered Christians should understand the worthiness to be called as a Christian. Even we, like Israelites, were and are living in Egypt, that is this world. Egypt was considered as the house of bondage because Pharaoh enslaved the people. Similarly, Satan, who is described as the god of this world, is working at present and we are released from the bondage of sin. Let's read a couple of verses concerning Satan. 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. And also John 14, chapter 30th verse says that the prince of this world cometh. In shadow, we saw the Israelites being released from the bondage of slavery through Moses and they journeyed towards Canaan. In object, everyone who has accepted Christ as their Redeemer is being released from the bondage of sin through antitypical Moses, that is Jesus Christ, and are journeying towards heavenly Canaan. So we concluded that Egypt can be compared to the world, Israelites to Christians, and Pharaoh to Satan. The Israelites, being impatient, they wanted to fashion God according to their minds. 
Likewise, Christians who were released from Egypt, that is, from this world, wanted to fashion God according to their minds. Like Aaron, some have symbolically done the same. Years symbolize understanding. As we read in Matthew 13, chapter 9, verse, He who has ears, let him hear. And also in 13th verse it says, Hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Therefore, ears symbolize understanding. People gave golden earrings. Gold symbolizes good character. How? We know that gold never changes its character. Likewise, the first gold we are reminded of is our Lord Jesus Christ, because he never changes his character. As we read in Hebrews 13, chapter 8, verse, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The Israelites gave golden earrings for Aaron to carve them into a molten calf, meaning many Christians have given their good character according to their understanding to fashion God according to their understanding and their own minds. The problem is good thoughts have resulted in evil outcomes. Many see good thoughts in Christians, but due to short-sightedness, fail to see the resulting evil outcomes. Without understanding the majesty of God, many Christians have made God according to their minds. They do not stop here. They claim that it was this God who brought them out of Egypt, and that is, this world. Many Christians, from their good thoughts and characters, they establish a nature of a Christian based on their own understanding. Dear brethren, a nature of a Christian should not come from good thoughts, but rather it should be the true nature of Christ. Like how Jesus Christ fulfilled and walked according to the commandments. The nature of a Christian should be like Christ. So any good thoughts conceived in human mind may not be according to God's principles as we read in Proverbs 16 chapter 25th verse. There is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way to death. Israelites, with their good thoughts, made a molten calf, which is an analogy to God. Same did Christians. It is necessary that a true Christian does not consider human thoughts and speculations as divine, but rather carefully examines the scripture and stays deeply rooted in it. Why are many Christians ignorant about this? It was because of what Aaron said in Exodus 32nd chapter, 5th verse. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. When the Christians have made an analogy to God, a molten calf according to their imaginations, people like Aaron built an altar. When an altar is kept before a molten calf, first the altar is visible. Likewise, many Christians fail to see the molten calf, an analogy to God that was purely made out of human imaginations. The purpose of altar is for sacrifices. And we know that antitypical altar is our Lord Jesus Christ. Any sacrifice made to God 
should be through Jesus Christ as we read in Hebrews 13 chapter 10th verse. We have an altar. Since many Christians have kept an altar before a molten calf, it is the altar that is Jesus Christ which is first seen and not the molten calf, an analogy to God. This cunning work of Satan has prevented many to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. We did not stop there. Aaron appointed a feast to the Lord. Many Christians have appointed a feast according to their own minds and imaginations. There is an upcoming feast next month. We see no scriptural evidences or support for this upcoming festival. Dear brothers and sisters, let us be careful that we do not consider good thoughts and human speculations as divine. We have been called for a heavenly calling. Let our thoughts be from the Bible, from the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may be worthy for which we have been called to inherit. May our Lord's care and protection be with us. Amen.